मॉडर्न मॉनेटरी थ्योरी और द रेमिटी इज द मोस्ट टॉक्ड अबाउट मेडिसिन फॉर सेविंग द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी इन अ पोस्ट पैंडेमिक वर्ल्ड द थ्योरी एडवोकेट्स दैट द गवर्नमेंट शुड प्रिंट मोर मनी टू क्रिएट फुल एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड शुड नॉट वरी अबाउट फिजिकल डेफिसिट और द हायर डेट लेवल्स इज द रेमिटी द आंसर टू सेव द वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम फॉलिंग ग्रोथ और रेसेशन सर्टेनली नॉट for an emerging economy like india which is very weak financials mmt is not new theory or a concept it has been around for decades the supporters of mmt says the inflation is no longer a concern in the current times they cite the example of us and other economies where despite the near zero interest rate and creation of more money in the post 2008 financial crisis there was no trace of inflationary pressure japan is another example where despite low or negative interest rate there is hardly any inflation the defenders of mmt suggest the fiscal policy tool of printing more money should be used to create jobs and in the worst case scenario if the inflation comes back the government always has taxes and borrowing from market as fiscal tools to contain the inflation in a nutshell those who favors mmt are advocating that the conventional monetary policy has actually failed in the last decade to revive growth those who are opposing mmt give the same example of us and japan where despite low interest rates and more liquidity the growth didn't return these economies are still grappling with unemployment and low growth in fact their debt levels have gone up substantially it is 100% of gdp in us and 250% in japan the critic says the printing of more money is in no way going to increase the economic output instead it will increase the money supply create imbalances in the financial system make the monetary policy ineffective and encourage the political class to make it a permanent feature without realizing its long term implications mmt is certainly not for india mmt means a sustained large fiscal deficit india already has a large fiscal deficit which we are not able to reduce it take for example just before the financial crisis india did manage to contain its fiscal deficit to 2.5% of its gdp but a fiscal stimulus in 2008 and 9 pushed the fiscal deficit to 6.0% and 6.5% in the immediate next year a decade later india's fiscal deficit is still very large at 4.6% in 2019 and 20 we are not able to restore it back to 2005% of the pre 2008 level the covid crisis has further compounded the economic problems of india in the current year the combined borrowing of central and the state is likely to increase from rupees 13 lakh crore plus to rupees 22 lakh crore this means additional borrowing of rupees 9 lakh crore in the year 2020-21 our combined debt of center and state is already 90% of the gdp which is very close to a developed economy like us the fiscal deficit is now expected to shoot up to 7% in the current fiscal which is a very high number going forward a higher fiscal deficit means raising resources from banks and financial institution which means lower resources for the productive private sector like they say there are no free lunches the higher debt under mmt will come back to haunt everyone or the future generation in the form of higher inflation or higher taxes while mmt offers a solution to higher inflation by imposing higher taxes india already has very high taxes in the world take for example india has the highest taxes on petrol and diesel in the world the corporate taxes in india are also the highest india's economic conditions or the fiscal parameter with fiscal deficit trade deficit and the current account deficit are also just not try right to venture into something like mmt to create full employment or boost growth there is however a small window for a one time debt monetization or printing of money in the current pandemic situation but it's a big no to experiment with modern monetary theory for india